Welcome to DC Fedu Blog. Today, uh, my name is uh, Henry, or you can call me Sir Henry. I'll be taking you in physics. The topic for today is elasticity. These are the lesson objectives. We're going to go through these definitions, Hooke's law, stress and strain, energy stored, and elastic material. Uh, this topic may be simple, but uh, Students find it difficult to learn on their own, but with this, we are good to go. Uh, that reminds me, at the end, please always go to the link, follow the link, and uh, get your past questions, your jump past questions, wired with CME. Even the calculations under this thing, most of them will be solved under the exercises. If you are new to this channel, click on the subscribe link like share if you have any questions other than the ones you have already seen please leave it in the comment uh, section below thank you okay let's start for today uh, first of all what is elasticity elasticity deals with materials which are also called elastic materials uh, let's take for instance uh, you have a spring a spring is an example of an elastic material. Also, we have a rubber band. A rubber band is also an example of an elastic material. So what is elasticity? Elasticity can be defined as... So elastic can be defined as the ability of a material to stretch when a force is applied in it. For instance, if you get a rubber band and you stretch, as you are stretching it, the size of the rubber band continues increasing. That process is what you call elasticity. The same thing is applied to a spring. A spring on its own, once you add a load, a spring stretches. That load is an example of a force applied to the string. Therefore, it will also stretch. Once you remove the force, it goes back to its normal size. Now let's talk about Hooke's law. Hooke's law is actually the law that governs anything concerning an elastic material. What does Hooke's law state? Hooke's law states that the force applied on a particular elastic material is directly proportional to the extension of the material. This is Hooke's law. Let me put it down. So this is Hooke's law. It states that the force applied on elastic material is directly proportional to the extension on the material. For example, we have a spring like this. And the initial extension of the spring is this way. Once a load or a force is applied on this string, we have something like this. And the initial length of the string is this, from here to here, this is the original length. Now when I, an external force is applied on this string, it gives us an extra extension. This is now the final length. The extension on the string. So what does Hooke's law state? The more you apply a force on this, the more you stretch it, the more the extension. So which means if you remove the force, it comes back to its original length. So by mathematics, Hooke's law is telling us that the force applied an elastic material is directly proportional to its extension. That is Hooke's law. As the force increases, the extension also increases. If the force reduces, the extension also reduces. Now, if you remove the sign of proportionality, Hooke's law becomes, you put an equality sign, put um, constant, and this. And remember, remember in physics, every constant has a meaning. Every constant has a meaning. In this case, the K here stands for 
the force constant. The K is called the force constant. Now the force constant is the stiffness, the little force you need for an extension to occur. You call it the force constant. Now, if you make the K the subject of the formula, the K becomes F over E. If you make K the subject of the formula, K becomes F over E. So if K is a constant and is equal to F over E, that means that F over E is also a constant. So you are qualified to say that F1 over E1 is equal to F2 over E2 is equal to F3 over E3 is equal to and so on and so forth. So provided this is equal to this, it is justified to put down that all these are equal. So in some questions that we are given two forces and one extension, I ask to calculate the next extension, you make use of this formula. Okay, and let's continue. So this is what Hooke's law is all about. Now, it is uh, important to note that the extension is giving us the final length minus the original length. That's the extension, because this sometimes confuses students. Please, extension here does not mean the original length, as we can see from the diagram. When extension only occurs when you apply a force to it, that length, the extra length given is what you call extension. Please note, the extension is equal to final length minus the original length. Now let's solve a question concerning Hooke's law. Now before we venture into the questions concerning Hooke's law, let's first of all throw light on the graphical aspect of Hooke's law. So we recall that Hooke's law states that the force is directly proportional to the extension. So if we have to have that graph, it simply means, like I said, if you plot the force in Newton against the extension in meter or in centimeter, or meter is the original unit, then it is a graph that will pass through the origin this way. So, once you plot this against this, as the force is increasing, the extension is also increasing. Sometimes it may not appear this way. They can just decide to pick a particular type of force. Like I said, a load, for instance, is a force. So the graph may come this way, load plotted against extension. Load is a type of force. It can be in kg, it can be in a Newton. Is in kg you convert to newton by multiplying by 10. So it will also go this way. Now this is also the graphical representation of a Hooke's law. Uh, another thing you can be asked in elastic material is this. Sometimes in your questions, if you go through that, some of you must have seen something like this and it confuses you. Now, if you are plotting, or in reality actually, something can occur if you have a force against extension. And initially, obeying Hooke's law, it will go this way. But at a point, something will happen and the graph will come this way, like this. Now, from this point to this point, you can see that Hooke's law is obeyed. From here, let me just model this. A, let me call here B, and here C. Now, from O to A is what you call the proportional limit. The proportional limit. Why? Because it obeys Hooke's law. Hooke's law states that it must be directly proportional from here to here. Now, beyond here, this point is called the elastic limit. The elastic limit. So what is an elastic limit? It is the highest 
limit that an elastic material can attain. Anything above that, anything beyond it, which is what the graph is telling us. Maybe you exceed the elastic limit up to this point. Now, from here to here, we call it the plastic. Actually, from A to C, is called the plastic limit. Anything beyond the elastic limit is called the plastic limit. So once you stretch, some of us have done these examples when we are still children. If you get a rubber band, for instance, and stretch, you continue stretching. There is a limit you will reach. The color of the uh, rubber band will change to start looking as if it is white. That limit is what you call a uh, plastic limit. Once you continue stretching at a point C, at a point C, if you stretch more, the rubber band will break at point C. So this is called the breaking point. The breaking point. So please note this graph, very, very important. If Y or Jam wants to ask you, even in your question, they want to ask you a question on this. What they will ask you is, from this point O to A, they will give you four options and ask you, what is it called? Please note, from point O to A is called the proportional limit. Why? This particular point A is called the elastic limit. Anything beyond the elastic limit is called the plastic limit. If you now go beyond the plastic limit, you have the breaking point. So anything be beyond the elastic limit, Hooke's law is not obeyed. Please note that. Anything beyond the elastic limit. Once the elastic limit is exceeded, Hooke's law stops existing. Please note that. Now let's venture into questions concerning Hooke's law. Okay, so this is question number one, and we are going to apply Hooke's law to this question. And this question says, a force of 5 Newton applied to an elastic spring of length 2 meters makes it to extend by 0 0.01 meter. What will be the new length? If a force of 10 Newton is applied. Now, this question is a very tricky question. Be very careful. This is the original length of the question. This is the extension. If you listen from the introduction, I say that the extension is equal to the final length minus the original length. That is the formula of extension, which means that the final length is equal to extension. If you this, maybe the third of formula, if this crosses the quantity sign, you change this to plus. So the final length is giving us extension plus original length. Uh, but before we get the final length, which is what they are asking us, what will be the new length, which is the final length, if a force of 10 Newton is applied to this? Now for us to do that, we first of all have to get uh, the force constant with the first equation. So applying, according to Hooke's law, from Hooke's law, you say that the force is equal to the force constant times the extension. So we know the force constant, which is, sorry, the force, which is 5 Newton. We know the extension when this force is applied, which is 0 0.01 meter. So we use it and get the force constant. So the force constant, if we make it the subject, is equal to F over E. So the force here is 5. Why the extension is 0.01. When you divide this with your calculator, you have 500 Newton per meter. That's the force constant. Remember, the force is a constant. No matter how many force you apply on this particular elastic spring, this is the force constant according to the question. It does not change and it can never change. Therefore, you can use this and solve the next question. Now, the next question now says, what will be the new length if a force of 10 Newton is applied? This time around, we know the force. We know the force constant of this spring. But what we don't know now is the extension. So we need to get the extension from here, from the equation. The extension becomes 
force divided by force constant. Now the force here, the new force is 10. Y, let's call this E1, this is E2. So this is 1. So the new force now is um, 10, while the force constant is 500. give us 0 0.02 meters 0 0.02 meter but the question is not asking us about the new extension what the question is asking us is want to be the new length if the force of 10 newton is applied now according to what we have here let me clean here now our new length which is now the final length E2 plus the original length. This is why I said the question is very tricky. Very, very tricky question. Now, what is the original length? 2 meters. That's the original length. Why the new extension when this thing is applied is this. So we just simply say, and when we see E2, we substitute 0 0.02 plus the original length, which is 2 meters. So our final answer becomes 2.02. Now, this is uh, one form of solving this question. You get your answer. You can equally solve this question in another way than going through these processes. You can equally solve the question in another way. So, I will still arrive at the same answer. Now, another way this question can be solved is by what I initially say. You can use F1 over E1 equal to F2 over E2. Why? We have two forces here. We have an extension, we can get the next extension. I believe this is easier. Now F1 here is 5 over E1 here is 0 0.01 is equal to F2 here is 10 divided by, we are looking for E2. So if we cross this file, we have E2 is equal to 0 0.01 times 10 divided by 5. This is 1, this is 2, and this will give us 0 0.02 meters. But we are not looking for the new extension. We have developed that the final length, which is the new length, is original length plus E2. So that gives us 2 meters plus 0 0.02, which is 2.02 .02 meters. This is faster than the previous solving. So for more questions than this, go to the past questions. We are going to see a lot of questions solved on this. More difficult questions and trickier questions are solved in the past questions and also in the exercise, exercise section. Okay.